Imagine that you have a series of ifs. You need to add some data if some conditions are true. You need to remove some data if some conditions are false. You need to change the way your data is represented. And maybe you need to add some additional information to your requests, to your data, to your initial information. However, there is a problem. Those ifs are unmanageable. And what if you want to change the way your ifs are structured, the way your ifs are ordered dynamically? That's where chain of responsibility pattern comes in. My name is Andrew and let's talk about it. So I have a function called process request here and it accepts a request. Imagine that that's our web API request or that's just basically our data. It can work with API requests with any data. So chain of responsibility pattern is very, very useful in almost any part of our code. So here we have a simple process request which accepts request. And the first thing that we do is lock our request into our logging system. So we can save it into a file. We can send our logs through sockets to another server, so do something. In our case, I just use print log from request. Then what we do here is if request user is admin, we say that request user type equals to admin and we print that user is our admin. So we change our data if some condition is true. The same goes for that piece of code. So we have request user is verified and we change that uh, user type to verified. And the one thing that we do is we check that if our request CSRF is false, we raise a value error. CSRF is just a vulnerability in web APIs and I added it for us to just say an example. So it can be anything. You can see that we have a lot of ifs and we need to change our data in almost any if, even if we don't change our data. So for example, in a log and we don't have an if, we need to somehow process our request. And the thing about that uh, process request function is that we have a sequential order. So a log goes first, then we have that if, then we have the second if, then we have that if, and then we return our request. So basically what we're doing here is we somehow change our data if some condition is true, or we do something with our data. So we have a sequential order of ifs. However, those ifs are not always manageable. So what I mean by that? Imagine that we need to dynamically change the way our ifs are structured. So what if we need to change is admin if and is verified if, so we need to swap them. What if we need to swap the order of those ifs? What if we need to quickly remove that request CSRF in special types of requests. That can be really, really complicated if we're just using that function. However, chain of responsibility pattern can help us with that. So let's start with a simple class called handler. So handler is going to be an abstract based class, basically a skeleton for our handlers. And uh, what I'm going to do here is create a function called abstract method. I'm going to import it, of course, from ABC module. And then what I'm going to do here is call a function called handle and supply data in my argument. So array is not implemented error would be useful here. So let's just put it right there. So what is that? Handler is our base class that is going to help us to define concrete handlers. And each handler is either an if or some piece of your code that somehow interacts with your data. So it can change your data or it can just print log um, information that uh, contains your data. So anything that interacts with our data. Class handler is just an abstract based class, but we can find four handlers in our code. So the first one is log. So that is the first handler. The second one is, is admin. The third one is, is verified. And the fourth one is CSRF check. We have four separate handlers and let's just quickly define them. So I'm going to show you the first one and then quickly we'll skip through all the other handlers. So let's start with is admin handler. What I'm going to do here is user admin handler class and it's going to inherit from handler. Of course, I'm going to have handle function inside of here. And the only thing that I'm going to do is copy my data from here, paste it here, change request to data. And basically that's it. Also, I'm going to add return data at the end. We have user admin handler, which creates handle function inside of it. And if our data dot user dot is admin is true, we are, we are defining our data user type or we say that our data user type is equal to admin. So that is a simple handler, but let me just quickly write all the other ones. Now you can see all the handlers that I created for that example. We have user admin handler that just basically checks if our user is admin and uh, returns data at the end. Then we have our working handler, which simply locks our information to our logging system. In our case, it's just a print. Then we have our user verified handler. 
and uh, it basically does the same thing as user admin handler. The only difference is is verified here and verified string here. So we can even combine them if we would use that as a real code. So, but for now, as an example, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So user verified handler, which checks if our user is verified, and if it is, we set type as a verified string. Then we have our CSRF handler. And once again, CSRF is just a vulnerability. It's just for us to see. And the only thing that we do here is if data.csrf is false, we raise value error or else we return data. So return data is really, really important. And we have that return data in all of our handlers. Why it is? Because what we're going to do now is we're going to create a chain class. So class chain. And what it's going to do is have a constructor, which is going to create a handlers list. So a list of handlers. Then in that chain class, I'm going to have add handler function, which is going to have handler of class handler as an argument. And what I'm going to do here is sell handlers append handler. Of course, the variable itself. And also the last function that we need to write is handle. And handle function is the thing that is going to combine all of that. So it's going to combine all of our handlers and our chain. So what is happening in our chain right now? We have a list of handlers. So a list of those classes. And then in add handler function, we can dynamically add the handler that we need. And those are going to be stored in a list, so in some sort of order. And then we have a function called handle. And the only thing that we need to do in here is for handler in self handlers, what I'm going to do is data equals to handler dot handle from data. And of course, we need to get some data to supply it to our handlers. So handle function is going to accept our data as the argument. Then for each handler in our self handlers list, we're going to handle the data with that concrete handler. And we're also saying that data is an updated version of the data that we had before. So we're going to basically improve the if system with classes. Now, if we go to, for example, user admin handler, we're going to add the data user type as admin. And then our data, so the initial data that we supply to our handle is going to be updated. Kind of like that. The only thing that we need to do at the end is return our data. Return. All right, but now let's write the real code that is going to use our chain. So I'm going to have main function with some data as the parameter. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to create a chain. So chain object. Then chain dot add handler from our first user admin handler. As you can see, the only thing that I'm doing here is I'm saying chain is a new object of um, chain class and we add different handlers in a sequential order. So we add login handler at the first place, then we add user admin handler, then verified and CSRF handlers. And now if I call data equals chain dot handle from our data, or I can even say updated data. So what's going to happen now? We're going to have four of our handlers in the chain. And then once I call chain dot handle, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each handler and call handle function. That function can either update the data or leave it as it is. So in our user admin handle, if our user is an admin, we update our data. Or we can just return it if our user is not an admin. Or we can do something like a login handler where we just log our information and leave it as it is. So handlers can be different and their behavior can be really, really, really different. But the only thing that you should remember is that you need to somehow interact with the data in each of your handlers. So you don't need to mutate it. So you don't need to change it, but you need to interact with it. So with our login handler, we can print our data or log it to our logging systems. All right, but now let's talk about why do you need to use it? So first of all, what you can do is change your handlers dynamically in runtime. You can change their order. You can change the way your object is handled. You can change almost anything. Second of all, our code is cleaner. So now we can see that we have four handlers and we can use it multiple times. So I don't need to copy my code if I have the same if or if I have the same sequence of ifs. What I can do is just copy the chain and the chain is just an object. So nothing very bad in copying our object or we can just use that object once again. So I can use chain handle and then chain dot dot handle once again. The best example for chain of responsibility is middleware. So if you've ever worked with backend systems or with middleware in general, you know that for middleware, you can have different handlers and uh, each handler can be a separate class. It can be a separate class from different modules, from different libraries. 
and you can combine your middlewares in any way that you want. And chain of responsibility is used there. So for each request that your uh, application receives, if you have your middleware, what you can do is supply those handlers and middleware will go through each handler and somehow interact with your data. So either modify it or use it in some way. All right, but now we know about examples. Let me just quickly improve that code because yeah, that code is not really Pythonic as many of you say. So what's the problem with that code? We have handle function and that's the only function in our class. Can't we use a simple, simple, simple function? Well, it turns out we can. What we can do is instead of class user admin handler, we can just have user admin handler function. Of course, I'm gonna delete self and I'm gonna do it just like that. So nothing changes in the logic, but user admin handler is now a function. And what we can do is change each handler to a function. All right, so now we changed all of our handlers to simple functions. And what we can do here is simply code. So user admin handler is a function that can be called inside of our chain and inside of handle, we're just gonna supply it with a parenthesis. So handler, parenthesis, call the function. Very, very simple. And what we can do is create all the functions for our handlers, but we can also use it with classes. So why is that? Because in Python, we have a very, very interesting method called call. Call is a magic function that allows you to use your classes as objects. So I have CSRF handler, and what I can do is create a CSRF handler. So let's call it A. It's not a really great way of naming your variables, but let's just call it A. And what I can do here is A dot, or sorry, A and just parentheses. So I created A object, and then I can call it with parentheses. If I press Ctrl P, you can see that it wants some data that is written right here as an argument. So we can now call our classes just like functions. And why is it really, really important? Because we can combine both functions and classes in our chain. Right now, we have CSRF handler as a class. For some reason, we need it as a class. So we have other variables that we want to supply. We have different functions that we need to call inside of our call function. We have lots of reasons for using a class. So there are some reasons. But we can also use functions for simple handlers. And that's how we can use chain of responsibility pattern in Python. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, and bye-bye.